to the barbershop. I'm your host, Matt Horner, with my co-host, buddy, Keith. How you doing? I'm doing great today, Matt. How are you doing? Doing good. Coming back from a weekend of rest and everything. Yep. So, anyway, been trimming trees and helping people out, which is fun. Yeah. Back to work. Big ice storm that came through. Yep. Took down a lot of uh, branches last week. Mm Mm-hmm. I saw... uh, some people trimming trees, and this one young buck was pretty young, but he could handle a chainsaw. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And I asked him how, where he learned to uh, use a chainsaw, and uh, he said on the farm. And what did you know it? He's one of them crazy on-the-farm homeschoolers. <laughs> 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 but he talked to me in a logical way, so... He does get off the farm. It was socially he, awkward. He wasn't one of them, I like cows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't one of them weirdos. I've never you know. seen anybody say, I like cows. <laughs> oh, there's some weird on the farm homeschoolers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they play spoons. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. From Arkansas. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've noticed in the barbershop lately that it'd be a Tuesday, you know, 12 o'clock, 10 o'clock or Wednesday, and here comes in a family and a bunch of boys in the family getting some haircuts. Uh-huh. And homeschooling is becoming more and more common. In the 90s when I was in education, public education, going through high school, grade school, whatever, uh, it was kind of rare. rare. Mm-hmm. And I think it had a, a um, I don't know what to say it, a, uh, what do you want to, when you uh, call a class of people, a uh, a stereotype, that's mm-hmm. what I'm looking sure, for, yeah. of uh, weird religious people homeschooled. Yep. Which was probably even wrong then. They were probably more just, but that's what we thought. Me as a public school kid. Yeah. That uh, They must be going Amish or... Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, uh, so... Getting really strict on the the good book. <laughs> reining it in. No more dominoes. No more night. poker. Yeah. No more anything fun. Quit the dancing. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I don't remember in public school ever knowing. Um, I mean, I guess actually that's not true. And that's not true at all. I didn't know homeschoolers. I knew them from our church. You know, there were yeah. several homeschoolers. But in our community in New Franklin, I never remember a homeschool kid. Well, we had some Amish people when I was a kid that worked the dairies. And they homeschooled. And then we had some real strict Pentecostal people, Uh and they homeschooled. And then we had this really smart doctor, and he homeschooled. And his kids became doctors, too, so I guess he knew what he was doing. (laughs) But he was mission-minded, too. This doctor, he was, you know, very much a Christian and and all that. So We had one kid come into high school from homeschool, and he carried a Bible around everywhere we went in, in school. As a matter of fact, we were the only two kids to carry Bibles around yeah. in high school. Huh. And he would take a Bible to every class. I carried a Bible for a little while. I mm. got tired of carrying it. <laughs> it is a bit heavy. <laughs> yeah. Bit After a... I made my point, let people know, <laughs> hey, this is where I stand. Yeah. I put the Bible on top of my math book. I'm praying for God to pass math. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Resting on the word. I did. I mean, I remember seventh grade, eighth grade, I carried my Bible into class a lot. And looking back on it, I mean, it was good. I imagine it was Maybe positive, but it was more of a self-righteous thing now, looking back for me as a child. Yeah. I don't know. I think we're allowed to prove a point, you know. We're allowed to prove a point. And it, I remember the the attacks on, on school then with faith people. Sure. We thought we, they were taking a prayer out of the football games. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's gotten even worse since then with the— Definitely. So— uh, I remember that was the whole point. It's like I'm bringing my Bible to school because I want people to know Christians go to public school. Sure. Of course, everybody kind of knew that. <laughs> <laughs> we get it, Matt. Yeah. So, but um, I noticed more and more people are doing it, and it's not just a uh, strict religious people are no. doing it. It's uh, I have uh, a family. Uh, they're bankers. They uh, they're just they they're more concerned about educating their kids in the best way. Sure. I just it's, and I think we used to think that that was something that strict religious people do, but now we I think we realize with technology and all these different ways you can learn mm-hmm. that there's all these different ways of educating your kids. Yep. And it takes you need to learn your math and your science for so many things. 
And now that I'm an adult and now that I have a fa- I'm a father of a four-year-old and a six-year-old, pre-K and first grade, I am now realizing there's all these ways to educate your kid. And what's best for every family is going to be different for every family. Mm-hmm. So uh, we come from a family that's very strong math-minded. Uh, if you listen to the show, you know that I'm a cabinet maker as well as a barber. And, and so I'm good at math. I can, I can take a simple picture and break it down to the most of a cabinet and break it down to the most simple, you know, measurements and mm-hmm. make a cut list off that. And my wife is an engineer, and so we want to have a strong math background for our kids. And there's just – there's math and science involved in so many things. Sure. And sometimes I wonder, where's the best way to teach your kid? So with that, um, today's show is about educating uh, kids. Yeah. And there's all the different ways. So – how do you educate your kids, Keith? Well, uh, I don't. <laughs> My yeah. wife does. <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah. we're 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 a homeschool family. Mm-hmm. My wife was getting an education in nursing. Yeah. And when we got married, <clears throat> I convinced her to uh, quit her pursuit of her career in college and. I didn't really have to convince her. She had a vision for our family to be a stay-at-home mom who mm-hmm. homeschooled and educated her children. And she's an amazing educator. Yeah. And I've got three children. And so my oldest is 12 and then 10 and then 7, and they all can read and they can all write. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my oldest is – they're all they're all super sharp, you know, of course. But uh, they, have, they read on an, an amazing level. Mm-hmm. You know, I would have Noah read anything. Yeah, he reads uh, novels of his own, and so does Abraham. I mean, he they can all bust out that Old Testament and give the long, goofy names pretty good, huh? Well, maybe not the names, but he's he can carry on. Yeah, yeah. And um, I struggle through the King James Bible now yeah. because who speaks well, I like that? I don't read the King James yeah, anymore. But I see some young kids read the King James. I'm thinking that guy's got game. He's got game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now, when you can add the animal noises and stuff, like a little bird whistling yeah, or the deer would, walking or whatever, then you really got game. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't force my kids to read King James, but anybody that can and is skilled at it, I do say hats off to that person. Uh huh. Yeah. No. Uh, our kids are. You know, we we have a pretty relaxed schedule. Like, yeah. Sometimes we wake up around seven thirty or eight and do the breakfast thing, and then we get started on school, and they're usually done by one. Yeah. You know? So your school days are a lot shorter than public school. Yeah, I would say on average three to four hours on the on the top end. Yeah. When you stop and think about, like, I got a lot of public – I was raised in the public school. Uh, I was in the lower half of my class, uh, struggled in the uh, math. Uh, I use math tons now, but I – we had to change. We'd go to class. It was 45 minutes long. It took probably the first 10 minutes to calm the class down, take a roll. You really only had 30 minutes of instruction. Mm-hmm. The bell would ring. You got 10 minutes to get to the next class. Then 10 minutes to settle the class down, mm-hmm. take a roll, 30 minutes. Then the bell would ring. And then next thing you know, you got recess. Then you got sure. lunch. So something that could probably, in a home setting, take three hours. It could take six, eight hours yes. in public school. And it's, you know, even in public schools today, it seems like you're not able, and this is, I guess, probably one of the parents' biggest complaints, as I recall from when I was in public school, maybe mm-hmm. you could recall the same, is there's n- there's just so seldom that one-on-one attention given yeah. to any student. The uh, Typically, the only students that get one-on-one attention are the gifted students who get put in a special class with less people, uh-huh. or the slower students who aren't getting the concepts and have to be really trained on a you know really one-on-one basis. And so yeah. the middle kids they just we do the thing and we read the thing and we do the work and some of the years I was in the uh, gifted slowers class. <laughs> <laughs> well, which was it? The gifted or the slower? I call it we were really gifted at being slow. <laughs> and uh <laughs> You were special. <laughs> special class in public school. And I remember s- just feeling ashamed at, you know, a certain times. Sure. And not that it, but then I thought, well, I'm living up to it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If you ain't expecting much, I'm not going to give well, much. But in the special, special ed is what we called them. And yeah. It, that, is, a, what it, it is a shameful thing, you know? And I, I remember uh, that we would have to take a test and like all the other kids would, um, 
get to sit in their room and then they go up. Y'all might need a teacher to read you the test and mm -hmm. verbally give them the answers. Sure. And so since that was going to be the case, you need to rise up, you special ones. <laughs> yeah, stand <laughs> Exit up. Exit <laughs> the class because we all know y'all need help for this test. <laughs> and so uh, I've often wondered some of the ways, because it is, it's like ranching. You're crowding these kids people into mm -hmm. a room and you're just like when you're uh, having to uh, take care of mass of anything you know you got to do it in, a, in an orderly manner sure and it, and, and it can't be really individualized nope unless you homeschool but then again if you have a kid that has a major need you want like, to spend time uh, dyslexia or mm -hmm. some other type of which are real things i mean dysgraphia is another one i hear and it's uh, not it's not shameful it's but not shameful but that might be where your kid needs to be because you will actually sure. get some educated help you know i mean right. helen keller needed an educated person to teach her how to uh, speak and sure. and talk and uh, not that your kid is helen keller but right but you know public school does offer um, if you have a kid that really has major needs, and I've it, often seen people too with uh, mental handicaps, uh, uh, mm -hmm. mental retardation. That but they could go to public school and they could teach them things like tying their shoes, sure. uh, how to make a sandwich, things like that. That yeah. Um, and there are a lot of teachers with a wonderful heart that mm -hmm. have a desire and a you know passion for helping students learn and. I think, you know, of course, teachers everywhere should be honored and respected yeah. for the most part because of their their desire to educate, you know. But, but as dads, we have a – God calls us to uh, raise uh, a future generation. Sure. So how are we educating as fathers, whether they're public school or not? Are we building models with them, teaching them how – are we taking them to the wood shop? Uh I've recently started, you know, doing little wood projects with my kids, mm -hmm. and they get so excited. We made little wooden race cars, little wooden toolbox, birdhouse. That's cool. And uh, so that's kind of the ways I'm trying to teach. Yeah. You know, um, I let them learn too. They wanted to ho hold the drill, and they didn't want to clamp the wood down. Mm -hmm. A little piece of wood. So I'm thinking, well, that's going to spin uh, once the drill bit bites into it. Sure. And that wood, since you're not wanting to hold it down. Uh, since that wood, since you're not wanting to hold it down, it's going to spin and you're going to, it's going to hit you. Yeah. So I'll let them learn. Let them learn. Yeah. You do things like that. That's why you clamp. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, yeah, I think that's good. Yesterday, speaking of downed branches, we had uh, a cedar tree that had some branches that had fallen out. Some pretty good sized ones. I didn't realize they were that big. And so I went out there and told the boys that I wanted them to move those branches to the wood pile and I realized that they were bigger so I told Abraham to go in and you know, I use a sawzall uh -huh. for that smaller stuff you know I have a chainsaw but he can handle the sawzall and he was super excited and wanted to can I go in and get it I know right. how to get it and I told him where the blade was and so he comes out you know and I'm playing in the yard with the dog and I see him over there fiddling with the with the blade mm -hmm. him and his buddy mm -hmm. are out there and uh they were like, Dad, we can't figure out this blade. We done shot it across the yard. <laughs> so they put the blade in there, pulled the trigger, and it shot the blade. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't get hurt. But Yeah. And that's another thing. You know, you got to – you just have to let your boys learn a little bit. So I showed them how you pull the lever up, and it locks the blade into position. Uh -huh. Oh, I, I – and it, uh, Abraham's buddy said, I knew it had something to do with that, you know. And so then I turned them loose with the sawzall on these branches and told yeah. them to cut them into bite-sized chunks and carry them off, and they did. And what? then I was driving, you know, into my out of my yard and noticed that my sawzall was still on, on the ground. Mm -hmm. So there's a training exercise there where we've got to take care of our tools. And so first you learn how to use the tool, then you learn then you learn how to, you know, take care of the tools and that's that's home education. That's what dads do. And then there's all the fun ways with technology that are coming in. Yeah. Uh, besides, you know, your fun ways of telling them to pick up tools. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> 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 I do the same thing. My kids leave the tools out, but the thing that my wife did, and she always seems to be the one that thinks of the fun ways to educate. We're in the hot tub at night, the whole boys and me, 
and the stars are beautiful and Sarah's out there and she pulls out. She's got an app with her phone on a real starry night. She can hold that app up mm-hmm. and the camera on the phone can tell her what the star uh, uh, constellations are. Yeah, that's cool. And so there we are. My boys are learning, you know, Orion's Belt, Scorpio, how they move through the seasons, uh, all this astronomy stuff. That's neat. Uh, where the North Star is and why some move differently than that. And so um, that's kind of neat where technology can come in and, and be an educator. Sure. Absolutely. So, and we use YouTube a lot. Oh, yeah. You that's know, my, that's been my best teacher. If we want to, if my wife is teaching the kids how to, you know, about the states right now, they're mm-hmm. learning about states and capitals, and they've learned about countries and continents. Mm-hmm. You can pull up a YouTube and it lots of neat documentaries about other cultures. Cool thing about homeschooling is when Amanda was teaching about um, countries and, and, and continents, we had uh, different dishes. She would make different dishes from those types of, yeah. of areas. And Eat a little kangaroo, no, something like that. Not kangaroo. Scorpions? But, no. <laughs> but uh, just different. Nothing like a fried scorpion. Different. Now, you would know. I wouldn't know that. It's disgusting. <laughs> anyway, and that's also part of homeschooling. You know, you can, it's mm-hmm. very customizable. You can do anything you want, and it really makes it awesome. Yeah. You know, homeschooling can be a lot of fun. Now, there's all these other ways, too. There's um, private school now. Mm-hmm. That's, my kids go to a little private school, which is really great. Smaller class. They don't – it's kind of a hybrid of homeschooling and yep. uh, public school. And the reason why I saw that is they're not – the way they do standardized testing and educate is a lot different than public school. Mm-hmm. And since it's smaller classes, they can really focus – so there's that, and they're becoming more affordable. Other states are bringing a voucher system. Uh, Florida is a great example of uh, a voucher system that works. Tim Tebow is a homeschooled voucher, a uh, famous quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, other uh, – some basketball players. I'm trying, to, uh, I'm trying to think his name right now. I can't believe it. It's the one who took a bath in wine. <laughs> Nobody really likes him. But anyway, he's an example of homeschooling and uh, – well, and there's tons of, you know, celebrities mm-hmm. and sports figures that are mm-hmm. have, have been homeschooled. Yeah. Oh, I looked up famous homeschoolers. Kentucky Colonel Sanders, ho- totally homeschooled guy. <laughs> I think we'll look at that guy and know he was homeschooled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had that awkwardness. Yeah. I love chicken. I grew up on the farm. <laughs> I can fry it. I can <laughs> I can yeah. boil it. It's like a Bubba Gump, you know. That's hilarious. All the things he could do with chicken. Yeah. <laughs> but there's... And then we have charter schools. So my friends live up in uh, the Metroplex, and their kids go to a charter school, which is – or a magnet school, some people call them. And it, it might be a school that's just kind of like – if your kid's into engineering, uh, likes to do robotics and okay. things like that, you can and, you know try to get them into this charter school. Or they have ones for animal health. They have you know all these different types of magnet schools or charter schools for – and so that's kind of neat because then that's a – different way and then they have uh, technical schools especially in bigger towns so where i grew up in stephenville we had a decent i've seen better but good um trade school in our high school so i cut hair now but if i would have pursued the cosmetology program in my high school i could have graduated with a haircutting license that's cool uh i knew several girls who uh got that out of high school, and they put themselves through college through cutting hair, like at the Pro Cuts or Sports yep. Clips. Um, we had a auto mechanic shop, my buddy Pedro. Uh, he's a good example of this. Uh, he was a um, – he might have been an immigrant. I never really asked him if he was born in Mexico, but his parents for sure were. He struggled through school, but he was awesome at fixing things. Mm-hmm. Uh, got into automotive technology in high school and – slowly got his uh whatever the certification is for mechanicking yeah and now he's the head mechanic at the toyota house and so here's an example of how a large public school can bring not just uh we often think public school for ap classes for science math whatever but it could also bring trades and that's a good point because when i was uh in the 11th grade as a junior 
we had a Votech school mm -hmm. in Boonville, which was just a few miles from New Franklin. And so I would take a bus in the afternoons and go to Votech school. Mm -hmm. And I remember now that I was in at one, I was in a class, um, manufacturing technology or industrial technology. I don't remember which one. And it was just me and one other kid and he was a homeschooler and his parents sent him to the Votech school yeah. and we learned how to weld. I caught my pants on fire. We yeah. learned how to yeah. do electrical work, hydraulics, pneumatics, robotics. It was awesome. It yeah. was a great class. Our welding class, I uh, saw a buddy catch his pants on fire and we laughed just like good friends should do. Right. <laughs> until it started burning his legs at a decent rate. Oh, dear. And then we patted him out. <laughs> but he was welded away and he kept like kicking his leg like, oh, uh -huh. and he, I think he thought it was a little bead, like a uh -huh. little welding bead that sure. like, stung him. And then he kicked his leg again and kept kicking it. About the fourth kick, he looked down and goes, oh my gosh. And it, Yep. His whole blue jeans were on fire. That's the way it was with me. But that's your buddy for you, you know, slapping and laughing at you. Yep. And then when you start crying, then we pat it out. <laughs> yes. And those programs are great. Those and are good programs. Homeschoolers can do that. High schoolers can do that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's states now that allow um, a homeschooler to come into a high school and take a, a course, just that course. Or there's even states now that allow them to be on the football team or the basketball team. Um. So there's all these ways now that I don't think really were available, especially with technology. We didn't have YouTube. So like if I was – my parents, you know, now it's – with technology, you, you can sit and take a class about like calculus. And your parent might not teach you calculus, but you could have an instructor over the internet yep. teaching you calculus in I, real time, like FaceTime. Yeah, I did an internet class in New Franklin High School. Yeah. As a senior, I took physics, and New Franklin didn't offer physics, but – they had a physics teacher, and all these neighboring mm -hmm. country schools would get in and, on this, uh, basically this webcast, mm -hmm. and it was just me and one other guy in this class too, mm -hmm. and we would we would do physics, but we were being taught by somebody who was fifty miles from us. Yeah, and then outside, I think all of us need to be involved in our kids' life, like this, which is given, but how we teach in outside of education. Sure, because there's an education outside of book learning. Yeah, and that's building a treehouse with your kids, uh, you know, making uh, firework bombs with your kids, any them science. Any house project, yeah. you know, how to work with your hands, how to use a drill, like you how were saying. How to use a drill, you know, how to paint. The difference between, you know, a crescent wrench and um, a channel lock, you know. How to use a weed eater. Oh, my gosh, yes. I'll, I'm trying to teach my kids how to <laughs> make the bed. Do the dishes. <laughs> yeah. These are just basic things. They're, yeah. Practical. <laughs> practical things. Very practical things. And So you're constantly teaching your kids. Either way, you're either teaching them the wrong way to do it. Sure. And that's the thing. We, we, I think it's easy to get lazy as in anybody's life, whether you're a parent or not, but you're teaching. Yep. People are watching. Young people are always watching, whether you're an aunt, uncle, mom, or dad. And are we taking the most of every opportunity to educate our kids? And learning is more caught than taught. Mm -hmm. So what you do can even, you know, for example, I when I was a kid, I didn't care about manicuring or having mm -hmm. a nicely mowed yard, but my dad really was into that. And so I mowed. I just I had to mow. But now as an adult, I'm very interested in, you know, keeping my grass nice. Yeah. And so now I'm trying to teach that to my boys. Of course, when to they, fertilize, when to put out your pre-emergent, when to seed. Yeah, I, I didn't do any of that. <laughs> yeah. I just hope we have a lot to learn. Pray over it, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> oh, and then uh, with that, you know, you're thinking all the all. I was looking at Charlie, and then how he can learn from his grandparents. My father, yes. his father-in-law, and my dad two different two different men that teach totally different ways. Sure. And you can get them, you know, we often think we always have to be the instrument as parents to teach. But that's not true. But uh, God gives grandparents oh, and aunts and uncles. And they're, they're a vital role, mm -hmm. grandparents and yeah. aunts and uncles. Scout masters and coaches. Sure. And so, you know, sometimes I've said something like in, to Charlie or Eli, but then my father-in-law or a cousin or an uncle says it and they take it. Yep. Same thing. But they needed to hear it from multiple times. So. Yeah, and yeah, there's a there's a tremendous you know respect that that children give to grandparents, you know, and yeah. so when it comes time to learning how to fish or you know even hunting and yeah, there's different things. I think that grandparents can play a vital role in that. Yeah. 
And then how we teach, my sister is a professor at Salt Ross, and she was tell, she's was she been working on um, how to, for science and technology there. And she was saying she tries to get them to read something and that you can maybe retain it for 10%. Write it, you retain it for 10%. But if you do it, you retain it for 40%. I don't know where that other 20% is, <laughs> but that's what she said. And my whole that that I thought if you teach them to do all this, so we're going to read about it. Sure. We're going to now write about it, and now we're going to do about it, you know. And sometimes you just do it, like mowing the yard. This is the proper way to mow, and this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. But obviously, I've, I'm being a tradesman my whole life. Me doing it, I picked it up a lot quicker than me learning it from a book. Yeah, and sometimes we get stuck on the how instead of the doing. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we teach instead of just doing it you know i think there's a lot of i, mean, I don't know if it's nervousness or fear but just dive in there you know i'm going to be installing we have family night on monday nights and i was thinking that amanda and i were talking about what we're going to do and we've got some backsplash we're going to install and we thought well we could do that as a family that'd, yeah that'd be something when they're not going to like it but anyway we'll just we'll give it a try and see some of these education you're teaching your kid now how to maybe do a backsplash properly or improperly. Mm -hmm. But either way, he's going to remember it. So sure. when he is a homeowner and he's doing a backsplash. Yeah. So we teach things that might not ever be come to fruit for years, decades. But there will be an opportunity to talk about, <clears throat> you know, the tape measure and the, the jigsaw and fractions. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. And that's really important, you know, and, uh, my oldest Noah, he he thinks he's not good at math, but he is. He's a he's a stud at math because I've worked with him in math before. Because I happen to be a stud at math myself. But anyway, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know he's really good, and of course my other kids are too. And uh, but it's easy to get down on yourself in math, but really there's a practicality to math, and that's the most important thing. You know, like for example, you're talking about making a cut list and this and that. You know, there's, it's very practical, you know, to be able to multiply and divide and so on. It'll give us an opportunity to continue to, you know, hone in those skills. But Yeah. There's the practical side of math, and that's what is very important. Uh, I wasn't good at math until I became a carpenter, and then I realized the importance of fractions. And then I realized how to make a cut list. And mm -hmm. when I started becoming a cabinet maker and a specific trade, and just like an AC guy – figures out pressures for air conditioning in a room and what size vents and what size piping and everything. And plumbers do the same thing. Mm -hmm. When tradesmen start showing you the math, they show a lot of practical math. Yeah. And then when you put it down on a paper, it's a simple algebraic equation. Yep. But I didn't know I was doing some simple algebra until my wife says, that's just a simple. And then she wrote the equation out more correctly, mm -hmm. got the same answer. And I realized, oh, I took algebra. I struggled through it all through high school. Yeah. It wasn't until I became a tradesman that I understood algebra. Yep. And that's kind of a fun way, whether your kids take an algebra in the public school or homeschooling, to show them the ways of doing math and all these different trades, opening yeah. up their doors. And then uh, my wife is a math genius, and I think, and so is everybody in her family, I feel like. But they talk about theoretical math. Mm-hmm. And now this is starting to blow my mind. And, and But that's where we find breakthroughs in science Yep, is through these guys. I mean, that's what Albert Einstein and technically was doing early on in his life was the theory of relativity. And now we know it to be true. So there's all these ways of educating our kids. Yes. And uh, it's such an important thing. And there's so many ways that we should always be open to how to do it and – we should not just be sitting in my recliner like I like to do in the evenings, but I should try to take every opportunity. Yeah, it's it's a, just as much a man's responsibility Yeah, to train his children and to educate his children as it is. And to have fun doing it. Yeah. Make a model with your kids. Build a cot. Yeah, put a Lego set together. Lego set. There's all these different ways to do it, whether it's homeschooled, public school. Uh, be a man today. There's too many stupid people in this world. Let's quit making them. <laughs> <laughs> from yours truly. From yours truly. You heard it from the barbershop. And Keith said it was okay. 
with that, go teach your kids something. Yeah, no doubt.